Welcome to episode eight of The Engine Room, brought to you by Defender. Joined today by uh, two of the younger members of the squad, definitely younger than me, Jamie Doby and Gregor Brown, and flatmates. <laughs> and they were roommates. <laughs> flatmates and roommates? What do you mean roommates? <laughs> you only got one, 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 one no, bedroom sorry, in the flat. One bed. yeah. <laughs> I thought Emma lived with you as well. Is that Doby's <laughs> missus? So you've got one bedroom in the flat and all three of you stay in one bedroom. Heating prices these days. Well, Cr- energy true. prices. Yeah, I know. Four yeah. kids, mate. I know how it yeah. feels, you know. The first question on the thing, why do you live together? <laughs> um, I can remember why, when we decided to live together. It was literally just like we were down in Hartbury for our 18 Scotland stuff. Mm. And we kind of both heard whispers that, that each other were moving to Glasgow. And I genuinely, I remember we kind of spoke about it. And then when we got back home, I felt like I was asking a girl out. Like I felt like I messaged Jamie being like, hey, uh, like all good if not. But like, I'm, I'm keen to live together if you are. Uh, a oh, real lovely. nerve-wracking experience, yeah. That's lovely. Because we didn't really know each other before. Not really, yeah. No. So what, no, sorry, no. so you were at an under-18s rugby camp in yeah. Scotland? Yeah. In Hartbury? Yeah. yeah. First time you'd met each other? Nah. Oh, yeah. We'd played together a few times. Yeah, we'd done camps. That was like the end tournament. And then we are both moving down. I was, well, I was coming co- across from Edinburgh from school. Gregor from Aberdeen. So both needed a flat. So the, the club put us... And, yeah, and so you must have known, so Doby obviously had a bit of cash for he'd buy, <laughs> if he's going to buy out, so I might as well try and jump in there. No, nah, well, because this is the second flat we've been to. The first one was, uh, yeah, we found it really late, quite a dingy place, but it was, it felt like home. Mm-hmm. But you own the flat now, don't you, Doby? So you're, do know. you are his landlord. I am indeed. Tenants rights? <laughs> I, I don't know my terms, agree. Right, <laughs> Maybe read up on them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not going to be any tax issues here or anything like that for Dobie, is, is it all cash it's under the table? <laughs> what? Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, right, boys, best and worst things. We'll start with the best things about living with each other. Gregor, you go first for Dobie. What's the best thing about living with Dobie? Uh, I think we're both just pretty chilled out, to be honest. Mm. Like, we've... I've Stop talking about yourself. What's no. the best thing <laughs> about living with Doby? Not about you. He's quite chilled out then. Yeah. But I, yeah. Because I saw, well, I read the questions beforehand. So right. <laughs> and one of them is the worst argument we've had. We've, ne- we've never had an argument. Well, 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 don't jump ahead because you're going to ruin the whole <laughs> podcast, yeah? I don't so, think we've ever had an argument. No. So you, you don't argue much. Yeah. That's one of your favourite things. Yeah. Okay. Doby, favourite thing? Because we come on favorite, to Favourite, there's a few. No, I think <laughs> one of the best things about living together is we're both obviously training we're both tired a lot we both know what it's like to be in training traveling for games and that it's not like well one's a student going out the whole time um so yeah we're have you ever had that boat. have you ever had that when you live with a student and nah, we've yeah. lived we've only lived together just you yeah. so from living with mummy and daddy <laughs> Yes. <laughs> living with mummy and daddy yes. to now living together that's it you've yeah, only known this yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. okay 1872 cup um, any memories from 1972 Cup, boys? Have you, Greg? Have you played in any yet? Uh, yeah, I came off the bench actually in the one last year at Murrayfield in the summer, towards the end of the mm. season, which we lost. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a cool experience. That was my first time playing at Murrayfield, and it was a good crowd in there. It was exciting. They're not like they used to be, though. Yeah, I think maybe because it was summer. You know, hopefully this year. When it's Christmas, it's like it's a lot of people's traditions. When family is all home, they all go and watch. But it was mm. it was like May, so it was, yeah. And was it COVID? <clears throat> nah, no. Nah. Dobes. Uh, I've played in a couple now off the bench. A couple times at Marford. The one that you came off, I think I did yeah. briefly at the end. Played the one at Scotston here last year. That the first leg that which we won. That was cool to be a part of. So I think don't know what point in the season that was, but we full house and we obviously won. So that was that was cool to be a part of properly, and then, but yeah, I said like I used to go to the games when they were at Christmas with family. We'd all like have a family Christmas, and we'd all it'd be a bit of a thing Boxing Day or whenever it was, especially at Murrayfield. Have you boys seen the new 1872 Cup jersey? Uh, yeah, we somehow, somehow were yeah. chosen <laughs> to help launch it. Yeah, oh, that's weird. I wasn't asked to do it. Yeah, <laughs> strange. Okay, and what did you think? Uh, yeah, real nice. I like Is that the, the white one. Uh, yeah, Smart. white one, bit of gold detail yeah. on there. Yeah, no, I, I think they're very nice, and they're mm. for sale in a shop near you. Yeah. Christmas day. <clears throat> yeah. What are you boys up to then? Are you back to see family? Are you are you spending it together? 
Are you in the flat? Are you not in the flat? Um, oh, yeah. have, oh God, is this awkward? Have, we not, <laughs> well, have no, you not spoken no, about no, this no, yet? No, no, uh, I'll, I'll usually go home, yeah, up to Aberdeen. You're back up to Aberdeen? Back up to Aberdeen. Um, we don't really have any traditions or anything, to be honest. Uh, Grinch. It's quite, <laughs> there's, a, there's a Boxing Day rugby match in Aberdeen, the Exiles versus the Aberdeen Select. No. Nice. Which uh, is kind of like good fun to go watch, family go watch. What, is, um, what does Jane cook on a Christmas day? Jane. Jane's is, Gregor's mum, by yeah. the way. That Hey, Jane. <laughs> she um, will actually be watching. I know she will. Hey, Jane. I mean, we uh, chat on Instagram sometimes. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> Jane slid into my DMs once. Yeah, more than that. Yes, she did. So... Uh, and what will Jane be cooking uh, on Christmas Day? Full, the full shebang, full roast. Um, usually a couple of meat options, a gammon mm. and a turkey. Nice. Usually. Mm. Um, I'm quite a honey roast gammon kind of guy. I find turkey a bit dry. Okay. Toby, <laughs> Weird. Uh, talk yeah. to me. What am I doing for Christmas? Um, this year I'm going to some family we've got in Cooper in Fife, my mum's brother. So uncle and auntie there, a couple of cousins. Uh, so we're all getting together. Have been last couple of years, gone up to Inverness where mum is and we all sort of get together up there. But well, previously we've been training on Boxing Day, so you're up early doors trying to get back down the road. So we decided we'd go Cooper this year. Yeah, we've Hel- got a few days off over Christmas. Yes, yeah, so we've got 26th we? off, 24th, 25th and 26th. How so good. Back How, down the evening. Franco must love Christmas. Yeah. They? Franco loves Christmas. Yeah, loves the boys. Pass it on. I'm actually spending... Christmas here for the first time, just me and the family. Although, oh, guess who's coming to stay? Nico, Uncle Squigs. Uncle oh, Squigs. No. Yeah, Nick Grigg is flying over from Carcassonne no and coming to live with me over Christmas. <laughs> Boys, um, obviously, sad, sad news recently of the passing of Dolly Weir, an amazing guy that has done so much for not only rugby but MND. Obviously, um, all the work he's put out there, and Dolly Aid is coming up. Obviously, have you boys, you boys, done it before, Dolly Aid? Did uh, you do it last yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, was it last year we did it? Yeah. We yep. did it as a team uh, last yeah, year. Yeah, log your, your training meters and, and stuff, yeah. And try and get people signed up. So yeah. we're going to have a big push this year, yeah. aren't we? Mm-hmm. <coughs> team so Glasgow. Team so Glasgow. Get signed up, get yeah. the app. We haven't, we haven't done that well. And guess what? I'm bloody captain yeah. this year. Team <laughs> Who Glasgow. let you do that? Who <laughs> let you do that? Well, you watch the space. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to make it something special nice. and uh, make sure we honour all the work that the big fella did. So yeah. if you haven't already mm-hmm. and you're listening to this podcast, download the Doddy Aid app. Log in, do whatever you do, and then make sure you choose Team Glasgow because we're going to be in there. And there might be a few little surprises coming your way if you do join Team Mm. Glasgow. How exciting. So exciting. How exciting. So hopefully you've enjoyed episode eight of The Engine Room, sponsored by Defender. Let us know who you want on next time, even though we probably won't choose it because I decide. So there, thanks. Cheers.